Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Get Real YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're joined by Paul Booth, Professor of Media and Cinema Studies, Digital Communication and Media Arts at DePaul University. Uh, Paul has joined us this morning to talk a little bit about the Virtual and Augmented Reality Communication Lab uh, at DePaul that he's started and soon to be released. Uh, and we'd love to hear a little bit more, yeah, a beta version of it. And we'd love to hear more about the program and how he got involved with it and what it's going to do for the students and, and how people like Get Real and other industry users of virtual reality, augmented, augmented reality technology uh, can interact. So, Paul, welcome this morning. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, professor of Media and Cinema Studies, Digital Communication and Media Arts. That's a mouthful, Paul. It's a uh, long title. And what it, <laughs> what it really encompasses is two separate areas of uh, the college that I'm in at DePaul, which is the College of Communication. So my, my area, the, the area that I started in and, and that my, my PhD is in, is in media studies. So I, I focus on um, how, how new technologies change the way um, people interact with, say, media, their, their, their everyday media texts. Um, you know, how does 3D cinema change the way we interact with movies? So, so that, that's where my kind of academic interest started. But then um, that led into this digital communication and media arts degree, uh, which is a, uh, an all graduate degree that we have at DePaul um, it, that focuses on digital technology specifically and how that's changing the way people communicate. And it's both a, it's a degree focused on, on both kind of the study of digital technology but also the creation of digital technology. So it really melds both worlds. Um, and then my, my interest in the, the VR kind of sprung out of both of those. Um, so yeah, it's a mouthful, but, but it's also, you know, uh, encompasses everything that, that I do at DePaul. So you mentioned that, that you're kind of involved a lot where kind of technology and the media and the arts kind of intersect. So you mentioned specific to VR and AR. Um, where does that kind of interest come from and what kind of has you thinking that that is such a pillar of the program or a unique part of the program as such that, that you've decided to start a, a communications lab around it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and if I could go back in time and, and tell, you know, the, the, the younger Paul, Hey, this is going to take a lot more work than you think <laughs> I might, <laughs> I might have done that. Um, my interest in VR sprung and this I've, I've actually found this talking to a lot of people really emerged from the consumer side um i i i like vr games i like uh i especially like vr entertainment i like watching things in vr i find the immersion really uh compelling um and so just personally i was exploring it and and um and using it in my just in my for fun life um, but then I started thinking about ways that I might bring it into the classroom because I'm always about experimentation and bringing new technologies in and trying new things. And I realized at DePaul, there was really no way for me to do that. I'm, I had a headset, but I've got 20 students in a class and there's no way, I'm not, I'm not gonna make them all share one headset. So for a while I had Google Cardboard and we were all kind of using Google Cardboard, but that didn't work quite as well as I would have hoped, everyone has different so, uh, mobile phones. Uh, they don't all quite fit. Yeah, it, so there's all these issues with it. Um, and then DePaul has this great uh, opportunity to apply for a grant to do um, innovation in, in research and teaching. And so I, I, I left it the chance. And um, so my interest really came from, from how do I apply this thing that I'm interested in in my everyday life to my uh, kind of academic life and my teaching life. And then the more I researched it and the more I sort of putting the lab together on paper, I realized this is actually applicable to so many people in communication. We've got journalists um, and you know, you go on any major news site now and they've got VR stories where they put you in the middle of uh, a news event um, or an event happening around the world. Um, we've got an advertising program, which uh, is a kind of award-winning advertising program. Um, and so much advertising is happening in, happening in VR, campaigns are happening in VR. We've got a public relations program, same thing, lots of campaigns happening in VR. And then in my own media studies program, I mean, the thing that clicked for me was the Star Wars game uh, of Vader Immortal, which came out. And I'm playing it and I'm like, 
holy cow, this is a whole new way of experiencing Star Wars. Like my heart is palpitating in a way that it hasn't since I saw the original Star Wars when I was a kid. So this is, you know, bringing together all of these interests that are happening in our college into one space where we can all take advantage of this technology. So um, that was my kind of vision for, for the lab. Um, as, as you pointed out, it is a long process uh, to put this all together. And so I started uh, the, with the lab in uh, 2019 um, and we had a kind of a year or half a year where it worked, you know, we were kind of working on getting the technology and doing some research stuff. Uh, and then March, 2020 happened. And uh, we realized, you know, people are suddenly not going to want to share headsets um, in a, you know, global pandemic. Um, and then uh, DePaul went all virtual. So we ended up transitioning the lab from this space where we were exploring research possibilities to actually teaching in VR. And my partner in the lab, uh, Dr. Bree McEwen, um, actually taught an entire class in virtual reality. We sent headsets out to the students um, and she held class in VR for an entire quarter. Um, and it was, it was a really interesting experiment. I think we, we learned things that worked and we learned things that didn't work, but um, the poss it, it really showed us the possibilities are, are enormous for VR and education. So as you get close to kind of reopen or, or have the grand opening of the, the, the virtual augmented reality uh, communications lab or VARC lab for short, um, what's it all going to entail? Like when, when I walk into the building or the room, like what am I going to see? What are the students going to see? Yeah, they're going to see, that's a great question. They're going to see lots of headsets. Right now we've got about 30 different headsets of different varieties laid out. Um, there's going to be, and we're still waiting on, on this, which is part of, part of, part of the issue is just the, the backlog of technology right now is very hard to get, to get things. Uh, we're going to have computers set up, state of the art computers set up for, uh, video editing. We have, uh, 360 cameras for students that are interested in doing projects. Um, we also have, um, kind of a whole system set up where, uh, students and faculty can check out headsets. Um, and eventually the goal is going to be to, to make this lab uh, a space where people outside of DePaul who may want to experiment with VR but don't have, you know, five or six hundred bucks to throw at a, a headset can reserve a time to come in and try stuff out. And we'll have uh, research workers, we'll have student workers, um, and we'll have some grad assistants uh, supervising the lab who can kind of help give some instructions to folks who are interested in learning more about VR. Um, awesome goals with that. I love how the fact that it's going to be kind of the vision is to make it be open where people, you know, regardless of study area, regardless of, of where they are at the university can come in and either check out equipment or can, can work on their own project or kind of stir that kind of creative energy within the group. Um, as you look forward, um, What's your vision of how the, the VARC lab and DePaul in, in, in maybe on a, on a larger scale can, you know, use this initiative to interact with the greater community of VR, AR technology, either content creators or providers, like in terms of, I don't know, partnering up or mm -hmm. uh, ways that they can support, like how do those, you know, to make that experience even richer for the students, um, what are some ways that you think that, that are opportunities for people to get involved? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. We are so open to partnerships with people uh, in, in the immediate Chicago area or virtually, because of course we can partner with people virtually now. Um, you know, the, the possibilities are really endless. Um, we aren't so much a content creation lab in, in the sense that um, the, the, in, in the College of Communication, we aren't programmers. Um, that, that, it, there's a, a college of computing and digital media where a lot of the, the programming happens. Um, but I think where our strength lies is in this kind of research uh, into the, the possibilities of virtual reality um, and augmented reality, which we haven't really, really touched on in a, in a huge amount uh, because I think VR is, is at a better place than AR at the moment. But um, 
So in terms of partnerships, I mean, I can imagine uh, uh, people at a, at a local businesses or um, organizations bringing folks in to experience things, to experience VR, but I can also imagine uh, the folks in the VR community coming in and lending their expertise to a class um, and, uh, you know, giving back by uh, guest lecturing or, or promoting their, their work, um, getting an internship program working. I mean, I know that uh, uh, at Get Real, you have interns uh, working and, and there could be a pipeline of student workers in the lab who then go on to intern for VR uh, companies. Um, but I, I also see, uh, like, you know, if a, if a company is interested in delving into VR, if they're not a VR company, but say they're an ad agency, a, a local small ad agency, and they want to say, how can we use VR? Um, the lab can be a space where they can come in and ask those questions and explore the possibilities of what's available. You know, I, I really want the lab to be a space for the community. I want it to be a space where people can come in and try things out and experiment and in a kind of safe way. Um, and I'm, I'm also very focused uh, in the lab on ethics um, and what the ethics of virtual reality are. Um, you know, where, as the world turns more virtual, as we have more interactions with each other in virtual situations, um, you know, the, what are some of the ethical complications of that? How does it change the way we look at each other as human beings and the way that we interact with each other. So um, these are big questions and I, I don't have answers at the moment. And I'm hoping the lab becomes a way that uh, lots of people can come together and, and we can all start answering these questions together. So uh, your vision for the lab and, and you've articulated there through the, the, the users and the students that you hope to attract is much more, sounds like a practical use cases, applications of VR technology, whether it be in media, news, you know, advertising, marketing, et cetera, who knows where else students will, uh, passion will lie. Um, a great center of idea exchange and a great kind of, you know, developments or advances in one particular area of VR or AR is going to presage, if you will, where it's going to, how it's going to affect other areas. And so I, I love the idea of that being kind of this nexus of that information and chance for people to see how other people are using the tool and see if they could use it for their own discipline. Um, and with wrapped in all of that is kind of like, we're still at the early stages of what many people think is kind of, you know, what's going to come to be a big revolution of, of both virtual reality and augmented reality technology in our lives as devices become more common. Um, and, and, you know, AR maybe moves from into, you know, the mainstream and the phone as we're seeing with all the mobile AR applications and as well as, you know, just starting to see those first so commonly commercially acceptable AR glasses. They're not here yet totally, but um, you know, as that many people believe that will be unlock a big piece of what that technology is used for. Um, how um, just in terms of like today, like as your students and you view the industry, like what's topical um, mm -hmm. what's, what's on people's mind uh, that, that would, would be, if you were open today, this morning, what might those conversations that are happening in the classroom, you know, what would those look like in the, in the, in the VAR lab? Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 we were just having this conversation uh, a couple nights ago in my new media and culture class, the big topic right now. And I think this is the topic for a lot of people uh, is Facebook's transition to meta and their, their Facebook is going all in on Oculus in the VR platforms there. Um, and so this comes back to that, those ethical considerations I was talking about earlier. Sure. Um, Oculus is a fantastic system. It's, it's top of the line right now. It, it, it like, that's the user system that is, that people know, but everything is locked into Facebook. And um, a lot of my students at least have issues with the way Facebook runs its business and the way that the kind of privacy issues comes up, come up. So how do you stay, I guess a, a conversation that we had and, and that maybe the lab can help people with is how, how do you stay relevant with new technology when that technology is in a kind of walled system um, that you may not necessarily want to be a part of? And I, I, I think this is a problem across a range of things. Um, everyone's talking about whether Apple is going to have a device at some point soon. Um, and I think the same questions will come up. 
Um, you know, Apple is its own little walled system. Uh, so, so I think these are these are the more we delve into these kind of larger questions of virtual reality, we can't separate it from the questions that we already have about social media, about privacy, um, and about our kind of autonomy online. Um, and I know these are very big questions, and 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 certainly, uh, you know, del you know diverge from. Is, I love putting a headset on and playing Star Wars, you know, but, um, you know, I think when you get students interested in studying virtual reality, you have to talk about not just the fun stuff, but, but the stuff that, that affects us on a cultural and social level as well. And that's what DePaul is all about, right? De DePaul as an institution is all about um, bringing to light these ethical issues um, so that we can live in a more just world, which I think is a great thing. Uh, expanding on that, um, certainly we won't be able to talk and settle all the Facebook issues and the, the trans or <laughs> meta. On this call, we, we could probably do this for days and not have that wrapped up, but uh, um, certainly as, as you go forward even. So just to get your opinion and um, mm -hmm. you know, to put you on the record here on, on, on YouTube for, for posterity, uh, go out two years, uh, go out five years, uh, how do you see that? How, I mean, what is your kind of case for how the technology evolves and how we'll be using it within that time frame? And certainly we'll, we'll, we'll have to solve some of these issues around privacy and platform as such, but assuming we do as a society or as a group or the, 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 the powers that be within the industry, you know, what could a reasonable user expect to see from the technology looking out forward? Um, oh, that's, that's a big question, Ed. And, um, you know, future casting is a difficult business, as you know. Um, to me, I think the technology is just, it's going to get better and better. Um, if you look at where we were five years ago to where we are now, just VR has come huge, it, it, huge strides. I'd say there's really two areas that are going to become focuses of VR. One is entertainment. Um, I think that the, the entertainment options for VR in terms of Hollywood, um, uh, streaming services, so, sort of the media that we enjoy every day are severely lacking right now. Um, and I think partly that's because it, a lot of people just don't have VR headsets. I think as the technology becomes cheaper and more available, more people will get it and we'll start seeing more entertainment options in VR. And that's what's going to break through, right? I think if, if someone is a Game of Thrones fan and the, the Game of Thrones prequel comes out in VR first, you're going to see a, a spike of, of VR uh, entertainment. Um, but I think the other aspect of VR that's really going to be a breakthrough is the way that it's going to enable working life to change. Um, in the way that Zoom helped us over uh, the over the pandemic um, to to kind of continue to have meetings, to continue to work in the office, that has is completely changed the way the office works now. Um, you know, people just aren't going to go back into the office five days a week. I think, I think this, this is here to stay, but I think VR is going to change that even more. You know, if you can slip a headset on for an hour and have a meeting with people, then that, that's, that's going to, that's going to be a game changer. Um, as long as there's going to be a way to bring in other media into that. And uh, this is a, maybe a kind of confusing answer, but, um, the trouble with VR meetings right now is that you're locked into what you're seeing. You can't type, uh, you can't take notes easily. Um, if there was a way to bring that into a meeting, I think that's gonna that's gonna change change everything. We need to become more active participants in virtual reality. So that's interesting that you say that. We do a lot of work at Get Real in virtual collaboration and helping people kind of harness the power of the tools right now and. Certainly, we've seen more success in adopters of the tools that want to not simply just recreate the PowerPoint presentation, if you will, that they would normally be giving on a Zoom or in a class or for a sales pitch. Um, and, and the true value comes with, can you use the benefits 
of VR, can use the fact that we're in remote places, but we can be interactive, we can be productive, uh, we can use 3D models and animations and tools, and we can examine things in very different ways than we're used to doing it. Certainly the way the pandemic has put everybody on a, a flat screen that's bounded by borders. Um, and here you're really talking about meetings without borders and you know without walls and without space limitations and such. So how would you reimagine using that space and what you can do with your, your class, for instance, or your marketing meeting or your creative team review or whatever, or your, inter, you know, your entertainment, your viewing um, that all comes. I mean, you're right in saying that everyone gets into VR and AR because of the, the gaming aspect of it, because it kind of starts you on this mindset of like, what is possible? But the more people have that, you know, the early adopters, the smart early adopters will be the ones that can harness the possibilities and and leverage it for business or for education or for getting a message a brand across to its you know its various audiences and so um you know we we help people do that we see that as being the key and it's great that part of what the vark lab will uncover is these optimal ways of communicating uh, and yeah. ways of using this as a you know soon the vr headset might be or the ar or the combined device depending what apple puts out um, you know, it's, it's a tool like your laptop. It's a tool like yeah. your phone and you'll be on your phone for 20 minutes. You'll go off your phone. You'll go onto your, your desktop. You'll work for an hour. You'll come off. You'll take a meeting in your headset for 45 minutes. You'll take that off. You go back, you'll put on your AR glasses. You'll get information. You'll have that meeting. You'll take it off. It just becomes integrated into kind of our tool set and what it's mm -hmm. used optimal for. So, um, some really yeah. great possibilities there. I agree. I agree. And I, I think from a technological standpoint, what you just described, uh, I think we're going to see AR glasses that can transition into VR glasses and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I, I think that's just AR is, is untapped at the moment for, um, for its potential. And, and that, I think that market is going to, is going to explode. So um, in specific, to the VARC lab, um, talk to me about when it's going to be online, when are students going to be coming through the doors and, you know, some of this great programming and opportunities be available for, for students at DePaul and then others who want to be involved. Yeah. Um, so we had a, we've, we've kind of had a soft open this quarter at DePaul. Um, we've had a couple of events uh, where we've invited students to try things out. Um, I'm the advisor for the DePaul VR Society, so they've had some events that have used our, our equipment. And then I've brought the equipment to some classes um, this quarter, but it's all been just word of mouth that hasn't had an official opening. Uh, I think our, our actual space is going to be open by the end of November, and then hopefully in January we'll have a, a hard open where we have like a big party with pizza. Uh, and then, uh, so we'll, we'll kind of get up and running in, in the winter and hopefully by the spring, we'll, we'll have the lab at a functional, uh, functional point where we can invite people from outside to Paul in, uh, as well. Um, so I'd say look for that April, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what less outsource for us. That's great. And certainly the fact yeah. that you, you can get in there and use the, use the equipment now and bring that it's fairly portable and students can use it now. That's great as a way to kind of seed interest um, yeah, absolutely. If, after people wind up watching our our, our our clip today on the youtube channel if people want to get in touch with you or DePaul or people at the college um, I'm, I'm sure we'll put it down in the comments as well but give us a chance of how people can reach out to you to learn more yeah uh well the best way to get in touch with me personally is email um and my email is very easy it's pbooth at depaul.edu so my first initial and my last name um, but we do have some social media for the VARC lab. It has been newly created, so there's absolutely nothing on it at the moment. Uh, but, uh, VARC lab DePaul, uh, is our Gmail, uh, account, VARC lab DePaul, or I'm sorry, VARC DePaul at gmail.com is our Gmail account. Um, and then we've got a Twitter, VARC lab DePaul, uh, Instagram, VARC lab DePaul. And, uh, evidently we have a TikTok, which I haven't even really played with yet. <laughs> Uh, which is also Vark Lab DePaul. So um, uh, I had a research assistant this this quarter set up uh, all, all of our social media. So I have to play with that and, and get things started. But best way to get in touch with me right now is email. So uh, look forward to, to to chatting about the lab. 
So we'll get make sure that we'll put all that information down in the comments section for those who are listening and watching at home. Um, Paul, I couldn't let you go. You mentioned you had uh, you got into it from a consumer love, and you were probably an, an early adopter as well. Give me a couple VR games. Uh, I know you mentioned Star Wars, but VR games you're recommending or favorites, and any recent VR experiences on the entertainment side that you can uh, recommend for sure. the crowd. Yeah, um, well, I love kind of mystery escape room type games. Um, and I, I, there's a game, I think it's called The Room, um, that I thought was really, really well done. Uh, obviously, Star Wars Vader Immortal is what really got me excited. Um, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, so there's a Doctor Who VR game that came out last year that I just devoured and loved. Um, but in terms of experiences, you know, there's... there's um, I've been I've been reading this book called Touching the Dark, which is uh, a, a kind of a memoir about a man who's going blind and his experiences with that. And they put together a VR experience called Notes on Blindness, um, which take his audio diaries and and give you a sense of what it's like to go blind. Um, and I think that it, it it one of the things that we haven't talked about, but that VR is is amazingly capable of doing is allowing us to feel empathy uh, for other people uh, and other people's situations. I don't know what it's like to go blind, uh, but putting on the headset, being completely immersed in this dark world, but seeing little flashes of light here and there, uh, it was kind of life-changing in a way to, to, to experience that. So um, recommend that. Um, I, I recommend that as well. That's great. Um, well, uh, we're getting to the end of the time here today, Paul. Certainly, we'll be uh, welcoming you back here, hopefully in the future, to talk a little bit yeah. more about the progress you're making and how the Vark Lab takes off and uh, different and ways I, that the community is interacting with with you and such. Um, and so, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, really oh, appreciate you're, you're, it. Yeah, you're welcome. And I, I'm really looking forward to collaborating with Get Real and on projects in the future. I think I think we've got a lot of synergy happening here. To use a to use a buzzword. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're looking forward to it as well. It's been a great, uh, great getting to know you and great learning more about the resources that are going to be available at DePaul within the industry and uh, looking forward to see all the great things that are coming from you and the students in the coming months. So uh, we will talk to you later. Thanks, Paul. Awesome. Thanks, Ed.